Welcome to the fifth part of my tutorial. I would like to suggest watching this video from the beginning until the very end. When finished, if you still have some questions, please use only the YouTube's message board right below this video. My name is Nicola Scanni. With a degree in multimedia and a passion for technology, I have a tendency to pass along my knowledge in a very simple way. In part one of this tutorial, you learned how to get rid of cookies that might create a virus threat on your PC. In part 2, you learned how to limit all those programs that run at startup and how to uninstall those we don't need. In part 3, you learned how to remove every trace of uninstalled programs and how to clean up your C drive. In part 4, you learned how to protect your privacy. In part 5, today, you will learn how to recognize spoof, phishing, basically fake emails that could lead to a bank account fraud. For this tutorial I'll be using Outlook Express by Microsoft, however it doesn't really matter if you check your email using other applications like Gmail or Yahoo, the principle is still the same. I'll show you three emails examples, from easy to difficult. Number 1. Easy. The other day I opened my email and I received this email apparently from PayPal. As you may see it looks legit, since there is their logo which I recognize since I have an account with them like probably many who have it as well. The problem is that it is very easy for anyone to simply visit any company or bank's website and just copy their logo and paste it onto an email. Here I've just typed PayPal on Google and here I found their logo. Ok, let's get back. On this particular email it is very easy to understand that it is a fraud. The sender is PayPal soikiro.okba.condensha.com a legitimate email from PayPal should have their names after the head sign. If we continue to read this email, the sender's email is totally different than the one on the top. And in addition, when I just hover passing my mouse on the link without clicking, a setup verify support link appears. And as I just said, if it does not have a PayPal name, it is certainly a scam. Number 2. Medium. This one, besides the logo, have an apparently legit sender's name, service at paypal.co.uk. However, when again we try to hover, we discover that the link is an HTTP and not an HTTPS. The S at the end stands for secure and it is commonly used for secure transactions. And on top of that, the link is picamodas.com and it does not contain the name PayPal and therefore is a scam. Number 3. Difficult. This one is the best I found so far. I live in Denmark and when I receive a PayPal notice in English, I automatically know it is a scam. Well, this one is in Danish. The sender's name has the name PayPal in it. It calls me with my real name and it even warns me about fake emails assuring that they are the only legit PayPal since they have my first and last name providing me with a link just in case. However, I still have one more security step I want to make, which is the Hoover. And wow, they must be real. They even have a link with their name on it. And the length of the link is very long. And I know that is what the banks usually do to keep their private link difficult to guess. How can I possibly have doubts now? Well, let us memorize the last four digits on the link and check all the other links. Look at that, no matter which link we hover, the link is still the same. There is no way that a legit PayPal has the same link for different purposes. Therefore, even this one is a scam. The scam works as follows. You click this fake link and you'll visit a page where you'll be asked for your PayPal's email, password, basically all your sensitive and private info. Once they have it all, they will be able to log in into your real PayPal's account and drain your finances. There are many other ways to scam via email and of course I cannot explain them all in this tutorial. However, if you need to dig deeper or just want to be aware of other types of this kind of scam, just read the description and you'll find the Wikihouse link with many other useful information. This part 5 is the last of my series. I sincerely hope it was helpful. If you like my tutorial, do not forget to subscribe to my channel. 
Remember that every first weekend of the month I upload a new tutorial online here on YouTube. If you have any question, please leave a message and I will answer them as soon as possible. Thank you for listening. Ciao!